hot cues, memory cues, cue points, those can be a little bit confusing. A lot of DJ software doesn't make a distinction between hot cues and cue points, but Recordbox does. So what's the difference? Let's first start with a cue point. A cue point is a starting point in a track. I can set a cue point by using the cue button. For example, I'm going to a certain point in a track, for example, over here. And now I want to set a cue point at this point in the track. When I click the cue button, you'll notice that it sets a cue point. I can see this by looking at the orange triangle over here. If you looked closely, then you saw that the beat grid shifted a little bit. Why is that? That's because of the quantize function. Recordbox wants to round up or round down to the nearest beat in the beat grid. This is called the quantize function. You can find the quantize function over here on the right. Now it is enabled because it's blue. I can disable it by clicking on this. And now you'll see when I go off grid and I click on the Q button, you'll notice that it sets a Q point over here because of that orange triangle. I don't want that. I want to be exactly on the beat grid. So I enable the quantize function and I click on the Q button. Now a Q point is set. But not only do you use the Q button to set a starting point in a track, but you can also use the Q button to play a track. But the difference between the Q button and the play button is that when you release the button, it will automatically rewind the track to that point in the song. So when I click on the Q button, and now I release that button, then you'll see it automatically rewinds to that part of the track and stops the track. In a minute, I will explain how you use it. Let's go to memory cues, because you'll see I have a starting point over here. That's my cue point. But when I load in a new song, but when I go back to the song that I was playing earlier, then you see that that cue point is gone. That's annoying. So I want a way to store that cue point. And that is a memory queue, like the name maybe suggests. I can store up to 10 starting points, 10 memory queues in memory. And when you export a song to a USB drive or you use the performance mode in Recordbox, then those starting points are remembered. So you can use those starting points. Let's set a starting point. Let's set a memory queue. For example, I'm going to this part of the track. I'm using the Q button to set a Q point. Now I'm going to click the memory button in the middle of the screen. And when I click on that, you'll see that at the top of my beat grid, there is a white triangle, triangle now. On the bottom is the orange triangle that indicates the Q button, uh, the Q, the and the white triangle on top that is a memory queue. On the right side over here, you see also the timestamp of the memory queue. If I want to remove that, I can click on the X icon next to it. But I want to store this memory queue, so I click on memory. I can set another memory queue point, for example, over here. I click on Q again and I click on memory. Now I can switch between those cue points, those memory cue points, by clicking on the left arrow or the right arrow. There is no memory cue on the right, only a memory cue on the left, and that is earlier in the track. When I go to the left, you see that this triangle is white and this is red. But when I go to the right, you'll see that this white triangle is now over here and that the first triangle is red. The white triangle means that that is the current cue point, the current memory cue that you're on. Now the third cue point, and that is a hot cue. And a hot cue is a special kind of memory cue point. Because with a hot cue, you can jump to a certain section in the song. And you might think, well, I can do that with memory cues, can't I? Uh, yes, and that's where the confusing part comes in. Because a memory cue is meant to be a starting point of a track, and a hot cue is a jumping point in a track. What does that mean? Well, when a 
uh, track is stopped, when it's in the stop position, so it's not playing, then you can go to a certain memory queue to start a track. But when a track is playing, you can't use memory queues. You can only use hot queues. Well, you can use a memory queue, but you will notice that the track will stop. Uh, let's do that, so you see what I mean. When I click on play, and now I go back to a memory queue, then you'll see the track stops. If you want to jump in a track, you use a hot queue. So let's set a hot queue. How do you do that? Well, uh, I'm going, for example, to this part of a track. I use, again, the Q button to align with the grid when the quantize function is on. And to set a hot queue, you click on one of those buttons over here, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H button. And in this case, I want to set hot queue A on this point of the track and I click on A. Now you'll see that on top of the beat grid, there is an A. Uh, let's go to another part of the track, this part of the track, for example, let's click on the Q button to align it with the grid, and I click on B to set hot cue B over there. To remove a, a hot cue, you can click on the X icon over here. Now, when I click on A, you will notice that it will jump back to this part of the track and the track starts playing. When I click on B, you'll notice that it jumped to the B part of the track and it immediately starts playing. This is the difference between the memory queue and a hot queue because when I click on memory, the previous memory, you'll notice it will stop the track. So a hot cue is for jumping live in a track. How that is useful, I will come back to that in a minute. When you load a track on a CDJ, you will see that it takes a while for the hot cues to load. And this is because the CDJ needs to jump to that part in the song. There can't be a delay. While for memory cues, it doesn't matter if, if the delay is a couple of milliseconds. A hot cue needs to be immediately accessible because otherwise you're out of the tempo of a track. So it needs to cache that part of the track from that point on. So that's why hot, hot cues takes a while to load because it needs to cache all those hot cues of a track. Notice that you can store only eight hot cues in memory and you can store 10 memory cues in memory. Now, how do you use each of those cues? Well, you can use the queue, first of all, to set a hot queue or a memory queue, but it also aligns you to the grid while, a, um, while the play button doesn't do that. You can use the queue to preview a track, but don't shift the cursor in the track. So don't shift the playhead in the track. If I'm playing a track, and I want to hear in my headphones the second track that I that is coming up so I can hear if they are compatible with each other. I can uh, use the Q button in combination with my headphones to hear, oh, uh, how compatible are those tracks? Another useful way to use the Q button is to tap in the tempo of the other track. For example, when um, I'm in the two player mode, Let's drag a track to the second player. Now let's say that the first track is playing and I want to align the second player with my first track. I'm going to cue the second track by clicking on the cue button so it aligns with the beat grid. And now what I can do, this one is hot, this one is on air, this is what the public is listening to, your crowd is listening to. And I can use the cue button to temp to tap in the tempo of the first track. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And in the same tempo that you're tapping on the cue button, I press the play button. This allows me to start the second track in exactly the same tempo as the first track. And this is called beat matching. So how are memory cues useful? Well, first of all, they mark certain sections in a song. For example, a break, a drop, uh, the outro, for example. A very useful feature of a cue point is you can use a cue point to count down to a certain cue point. For example, when I go to a certain section of a song, for example, over here, and I click on play, then you'll see on top of my beat grid, 
is a countdown, and that is the countdown to the next cue point. And you can even increase the usefulness of this cue point by giving it a name. For example, short break. I can do that by clicking next to the timestamp on the right side of the screen, and then I can uh, put in a name, for example, short break, enter. And now, yeah, it, it doesn't show here in Recordbox, but it will show on your CDJ because now when I click on play, it doesn't only say how many bars that are, uh, how many beats that are counting down, but it also says on the CDJ, short break. This allows you to anticipate with an effect or uh, starting in the second track, for example. The second use is, of course, multiple starting points. I, I don't have to start a track always at the same time. I, I can uh, set multiple points in a track that are really useful for mixing. Uh, because I can say, for example, I want to start a track on the second drop, for example, instead of the first drop. Certain gigs it might be useful to start at the first drop, but other gigs it might be useful to start at the second drop. There's a super useful trick you can use with memory cues as well. Uh, let's go to the last part of the track and let's go to over here because this is the outro. What I can do is set an 8-bit loop over here because this allows me to have more time to mix out this track and mix in another track. I can automatically trigger this loop by clicking on memory while this loop is active. And then you see that over here is a loop icon. And this loop icon is now disabled, meaning that it isn't automatically triggered. But when I click on this loop icon, you notice that it will become red. Then you see that then this loop is automatically triggered when you play the track. This gives you a little bit of peace of mind because you now know that the track won't end. So you don't have to stress as much. You have all the time to mix out this track into another track. It could be that this isn't automatically triggered, therefore you need to set another option in Recordbox. Click on this hamburger menu over here on the right side of the screen. Click on that and then you see over here, active loop playback. Now it is set to on. This means that it is automatically triggered, but it could be that it is set to off. So make sure to check active loop playback in this hamburger menu and set it to on. How do you use hot cues? Hot cues you use for live jumping in a track. This way you can jump, for example, from drop number one to drop number two. For example, you're playing the intro of a track and at the moment that the track reaches this point in the track, you jump to, for example, point B. This way, you shorten a track. Let me show you. I'm, I'm playing the track. And du moment that this part is coming up, I click on B and now it jumps to part B in the track. So I've skipped this whole part of the track. This way you can shorten a track, but the other way around, you can also lengthen a track. When you're over here in the track in the break and you go back in the track, therefore let's set another hot cue over here. Q, C. And when I'm over here in the break and I play the track and I click on C, doink, now I jump back into the track and I've extended the track. So shortening, lengthening, but you can also use it, for example, when you have a third or a fourth player, then you can load in some effects and then, you, for example, a sound sample, for example. And then you can repeat that sound sample uh, when you click on the on the hot cue button. So where do you set hot cues and where do you set memory cues? Generally speaking, it doesn't matter that much. It's all up to you. But I find it really useful to set memory cues at certain track changes in a track. So you know that a break is coming up, that a drop is coming up in, for example, four beats. 
and just to go quickly to a certain point in a track when I want to start a track and I use hard cues to jump to certain sections in a song. Uh, generally speaking, I have mostly three uh, hard cues and the reason why only three is because the older CDJs before the CDJ 2000 XS2, uh, there were only, I believe, three or four hard cues. So I, I don't, no, three hard cues. So I don't exceed the four hard cues. The later models uh, support up to eight hard cues. Uh, generally speaking, I set the A hot cue at uh, at the second drop. So let's remove all of them. Um, let's cue this one. So I know that A is always the drop. I set a B point at a break. So the B for break. Q. So the B is break. And I use the C for the outro. And I've programmed that for all my tracks, so I know with all my tracks I load that A is always a drop, the later drop in a track, the B is always a break, and the C is always an outro. And I can jump, for example, to the outro when I want to have a piece to mix out my current track. For example, I'm playing the drop and I want to shorten that drop to mix in a new track. And then I, in the drop, I hit C to have the same elements that were in the drop, but I don't immediately cut out the whole track. But you can use also, for example, when you're over here and you are about to go into the break and at the point that you go into the break, I click on C. So this way I, uh, I'm jumping immediately to the outro, just so I'm able to mix out the track from the drop that normally would go into the break. And here you see it automatically triggers the outro loop. Most DJs don't know these kinds of tricks, therefore I've made a video that you can find here on the end screen, but also in the description below, so you can use Rekordbox to the fullest on your next gig. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Toodaloo!